Hello and welcome to a good look at Honcast, brought to you by Honcast.com. This is Suns Fan, as I'm hearing myself in the background, so I have to turn that up. Zena, why don't you take the rest of the intro out there and off the stream? Wow, that's just a nice epic fail right off the bat. Speaking <laughs> of a uh, little bit of a, a mix up here, just to clarify, this is in fact the uh, finals of the uh, CSN tournament here with EZ versus Port. And this is, in fact, game one. This is a replay. The games are going on right now as we speak. And uh, basically, this is just going to be a recap for those of you that missed the uh, first two games and is getting all three of the games out there. So hopefully, Suns fan is back on track and yes. give you his proper, proper introduction. Yes, we're good. That's the, our worst intro yet, unfortunately. But this is actually, uh, we're going to be going, this is going to be our last cast for probably a week because me and you are going somewhere special together. Isn't that right, Zeno? It's gonna, kind of like a honeymoon, so to speak. Yeah, I feel like it's a long delayed honeymoon, like 11, 12 years too late, you know, it's, yeah. it's been a, a rough marriage, you know, some rocky spots. It's but, like an uh, anniversary, if anything. Yeah, it's like a 10 year anniversary. There you go. Plus or minus a couple of years. So yeah, for people that don't have any idea what we're talking about, we're going to a specified location, I almost gave it away, to cast the NASL final two weeks, which should be a lot of fun. So I can't wait to sleep in the same hotel room as you, Zeno, first and foremost. It'll be a real dream. Yeah, I'm sure you'll between all the, uh, the gas and snoring and everything. <laughs> I it's hope. Be, uh... Yeah, so you're the snorer. I'm the gassy one. But I hope that you will treat me to a bottle of cherry Pepto Bismol at some point. Yes, I did promise that, and I will have to. I'll just buy you like all things cherry, cherry Coke, cherry Pepsi, cherry Pepto Bismol, cherry cherries. I got nothing on that, that one. That sounds delicious. So anyway, again to recap, this is the finals for CSN Play Heroes Point Cup number two. Easy versus Port. As you can see, this is Easy's new lineup with uh, the cutting of Angry Testy and the rage quitting of B Diz, who are now replaced by B Kid and Korok, who was essentially on the bench for a long time. It was, I don't know if I'd call him on the bench. He just was playing Dota 2, as far as I know. But he is back, apparently ready to play. I mean, the <laughs> most interesting thing about the lineup, as I was saying on the Honkast podcast, is you have Chu and Korok, who are essentially the same kind of player. B Kid and Semi Ju play the exact same heroes, and then Yoda, who's somewhat flexible, but usually like the jungler or even a support if he has to. So it's interesting to see what kind of lineup. And I mean, the Nymph Four first pick, as we haven't even started with the bands yet, is not surprising at all. Uh, they are big time aggressive players, and that's why whether they fail or not, it's still going to be fun to watch. Yeah, I think that was kind of a case of you had a lineup that was actually somewhat successful in. Uh, you know, the first uh, couple of weeks in the NASL. And it's not like Angry Testy or b were playing poorly. So I think that's why some of these roster changes came as a... Ch yeah, I guess it was a, certainly a shock to me. But at the same time, I think it really came down to playing style. And despite maybe it not necessarily being handled in the best way, uh, EZ is definitely a team that likes to play much more aggressive, doesn't like to go the passive farming, you know, 45, 50 minute kind of game uh, strategy. And they really just wanted to, I think, have a lineup that really fit that that overall strategy better than maybe their their old lineup did. So, in that respect, I think, I guess, if they wanted to continue going that way, it was a good idea. Yep, true indeed. And looking at the bands, we have Easy, aka Chu, banning Master of Arms, Zephyr, Electrician, and Jiraziah. And on the other side of the coin, we have Port banning Tundra, Plague Rider, Magmus, and Hellbringer. Does anything really catch your eye? It's not for me, really. Uh, well, first off, Master of Arms, just to clarify for everyone, pretty much has been banned mm -hmm. or picked in a lot of games recently for high-level play. You've seen teams like MSI run him a lot in middle. You've seen even uh, teams like... Uh, you know, he, the, the one good thing about Master of uh, Arms, not farm, is he's <laughs> very flexible. He can farm well. He can put out a lot of damage without all that many items. And he also has a lot of good, helpful support spells as well. So I think that's why you're seeing him picked up a whole bunch recently. And not really surprised to see him banned, but it is a kind of new ban on the, uh, the list compared to what we might have seen a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and I, don't th I think I said Magmus was banned. So Magmus banned. So as you can see, B-Kid picking up Behemoth, because that's the only other hero he's amazing with, as far as I know. I mean, every game we watch him play uh, from back in the day, it's Magmus or Behemoth. And Magmus Bans is basically Behemoth. But he's going to play the new Avatar, so that should be fun. So, so far for easy, they have Nymphora, Behemoth, Torture, so a very, very aggressive lineup. I expect, um, 
I don't know. I mean, Pebbles is still there. I'm really shocked that he's still there. But on the other side, Port picks up Poliwag straight from Chu's nose. But I think Chu's actually going to be playing Nymphora. Unless they actually do pick up Oh, Pebbles I don't here. know. They might, you know, they might swap things up a little bit. Or if they do pick Pebbles, Pebbles and Nymphora is a very, very common lane. Especially if you do a 2-2-1. Two, two, you know, throwing that Nymphora Pebbles combination into mid, as we see Legionnaire being right-clicked, which would be an interesting pickup, all things considered. But, uh, you know, I think Nymphora is one of those heroes that really gives you just so much ability to be aggressive and kind of bypass all the default wards that people decide to put down. So I'm hoping to see them not necessarily go with a, a passive kind of team, but maybe get a team that allows for a little bit better kind of ganking and very aggressive play on the, the Hellborn side of the river. So, so basically everything they're right-clicking would make sense, yeah. except for Mage Bane. Yeah. Where's Angry and, Testy and when you really need him? They don't really do that much burst damage right now either, which is a little unfortunate for them. I'm not really sure exactly what their their strategy is right now. And quite frankly, I'm just going to sit back. I'm going to wait for them to make these final two picks because I hope these aren't what they're going to go with. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just throw that out there. Uh, if they're gonna pick Mage Man, then like, what's the point of cutting Angry Test? <laughs> if you really think about it, you know. That is I true. Mean, if they um, pick Mage Man, Chu's gonna be playing him, and Nymphora, I would assume, is actually gonna go to Korok. Uh, although no, Torture could be played by Korok as well. I mean, those are gonna be the two most, quote unquote. I think those are the two best players are Korok and Chu, and there's no way Korok wow. plays Glacius. Now is this an is an interesting pick. lineup because you go with Mage Man. Along with, I mean, Nymphora is still a good support hero, all things considered. So it's not like it's a terrible pick, but again, it's not really taking advantage of some of the reasons why Nymphora has been such a, a highly sought-after hero in these uh, last few weeks of competitive play. So a little bit surprised to see the traditional kind of Mage Bane combined with uh, some nice classic support heroes and Glacius just... I mean, they're really setting up for a farming game, and if you look at this lineup, I mean, this is a lineup you might see way way back when trilanes are all the rage and you could uh well yeah they have trilane written all way, over so, them yeah. I mean, i'm not sure if they're gonna end up doing it but trilane would obviously be mage Bane, behemoth and glacius with them for a mid and torture in the sidelines so see if they end up doing that but port on this hand i mean what are they gonna do here they have polywood they have amun ra which we haven't really seen as of too much lately surprisingly along with tempest yeah. and the is that yeah that's a pick of uh rhapsody the new the new what is it called Death metal, Rhapsody. heavy metal, death or, metal. Is it heavy metal? And I cannot remember. I remember it's when you were of sorts, yeah. <laughs> you were streaming and you thought that you had a bug in your game that showed the death metal rhapsody. And everybody, the forums exploded with yeah, excitement. Yeah, awkward. And I'm like, oh no, I feel like I just released something and I shouldn't have. But as it turns out, like almost everyone could see it. So big uh, yeah. sigh of relief for that. Um, Last pick, Emerald Warden, which is a direct, well, I wouldn't say direct, but it definitely counters Mage Bane to some degree with that silence ability. But yeah, it looks like they're to, probably going to... Not gonna, to interrupt. Of course not. I have you, to say this. Yes. Rhapsody, by the way, just add a little bit of color to that. I swear, it just looks like... I mean, I bet there's almost no difference between a right-clicked yeah. uh, Death Metal Rhapsody. I mean, not that you can actually kind of do that, but I'm still, it just looks a little bit too gray for me. Looks yeah, like I couldn't tell dead. at first if she was picked or not. Like, are they right-clicking or...? Well, yeah, obviously, but... You know, any kind of uh, Tempest pushing lineup with Rhapsody is always a good pick, although Rhapsody was nerfed a little bit in her ability to heal gigantic creep waves and all that kind of stuff, which was much needed. Um, but, you know, I guess just looking at the uh, lineup so far, I would much rather be in port shoes than uh, easy, just because easy. I really just don't it depends. Really understand what they're doing, to be it, honest. It really depends on how good of a start they get off to but i mean the emerald warren i'm going to be most interested in seeing what lane she's going to go because she could technically solo but you can also put her well honestly i mean polywog's definitely mid tempest is going to be in the jungle and i would think amun ra rhapsody laning together and emerald warden soloing one of the lanes so we'll see what they end up doing looks like emerald warren is going to be heading towards top and tempest is going to be denying a creep at bottom to help out the rhapsody and amun ra pretty decent combo there i mean i'm kind of surprised that we didn't see somebody like perhaps a demented shaman with an Amun Ra. A uh, little bit more heal ability. Obviously, Rhapsody's ult's pretty huge for mid to late game, depending if you can get it off, but I don't know. Yeah. Demented Shaman, we've been seeing a lot lately against or with somebody big, tanky like Amun Ra or Zephyr or something like that. Mm -hmm. And on the mean side, okay, so they're not going to do trialing. This is what. So I was going to say this, my second guess was Mage Bane going to be mid with somebody. Looks like it's going to be with Glacius. Meanwhile, top is going to be Behemoth and Nymphor, which is very odd. 
Very odd land, indeed. It's odd, but they do have a decent combination of stuns, especially if you play Nymphora very aggressively. Um, just trying to get a lot of damage, but... You know, in in the end, it's not like you're super excited about getting Nymphora or Behemoth far, and I would imagine you know, they're going to channel some of that early gold that they might get to Behemoth, maybe try and get him in an earlier you know, uh, portal key than he might get otherwise, but I'm just not a fan of that lane, and you know, again, you can't really, they don't have that much burst damage. They don't really have like a great ganking team. Their main hope for success is to really dominate this uh, mid lane, obviously, 2v1. And the one good thing about Mage Man is he is a good counter to Amon Ra uh, with that mana burn that he does have. True. And I think this mid lane is going to be lost for Polywag. I mean, Polywag is a hero that you have to solo with, or else she's pretty, or he's pretty useless. As we're going to see, early aggression here from Easy. And I don't think there's any way that Polly can win this lane without help from Tempest. But Tempest, in the meantime, might need to help Emerald Warden, who's going to be pretty much perma stunned here at the top lane. And I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. With the fact that you cannot counter the ward that they have here for the stat or for the pull, which I don't think we've cast. A, we definitely haven't cast a game since they changed that. As yeah, a whole new to dynamic. clarify, four people, you cannot buy Words of Revelation until 30 seconds into the game, I believe. So the, one of the significant changes that they did make to basically the whole early game warding process is that you can't immediately have a counter ward um, out there to counter you know, things like the uh, creep block and all that kind of stuff. They have also made it so you can only buy two wards of sight at the beginning of the game, so that takes away a lot of various uh, laning wards and stuff that people might otherwise want to put down because they're basically stuck only having two. As we see action at bottom, Yoda in a lot of trouble being really harassed by Rhapsody and Amon Ra. We'll see if he manages to get away using that level one impale, but one more hit one more will do it. And yeah, does die to the passive in middle, just after the bloodlust there. Uh, Chu gets Oof. a kill on that Polywog Priest, who that's going to be a tough matchup, as you said, for Polywog. Not really going to be able to do too much there. Um, well, I'm really just going to hope to sit back and get leveled. You say it's tough. Gonna be... It's going to be a tough match. He's going to lose is what's going to happen. Well, yeah, but I mean, you're kind of expected to lose in a 1v2, but there are better matchups than that as far as uh, what he could be going against. I mean, you know, sometimes when you have uh, a 1v2 situation where you're in mid, you can kind of hang back if you're a ranged hero, especially with Polywog, you know, use that uh, nuke spell to get some of those creeps anyways. <laughs> is that what it's called? Take, uh, nuke spell? Oh, I'm sorry. Are we going to be official? <laughs> Electric Jolt. Yes, Jolt. Very good. That's fine. You're learning. And, I'm glad. You know, it's, it, you can kind of sit back and get levels and not take too much damage, but with the ability of Glacius to slow and throw down that ice block along with, you know, just Mage Man does so much early damage in a situation where he doesn't have to really fear for uh, being harassed down or taking any damage in return. He can just blink in and auto attack using that mana combustion to really do a lot of really good damage. And Torture is going to get surrounded here. It doesn't look like they're going to be able to get a kill. Ooh, the, the dance floor is a different color. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it's a very it's hard like an core, emo, you know. An emo purple, I think, is the best way to put it. But, I mean, mid lane. Oh! Oh god, I crashed. Oh god. And we're back! Oh, oh god. Wow. Oh god, I missed the kill. I oh god. Pausing and staring at it. <laughs> The entire time, but yeah, Emerald Warden does go down there. Uh, and uh, Suns fan, how's it going? God, my computer fails my life. Uh, it's like an old hag, and it's you know, just decrepit. It has osteoporosis, arthritis, you know, you name it, it freaking has it, unfortunately. But torture, how's um, how is uh, uh, Korok only level two at this point? Have we? How about levels everybody oh, he's else? He's had a rough time staying in the lane, and obviously he did die four for his blood there, so he's been missing out on some experience. Amon Ra putting a lot of pressure onto him. And, you know, overall, this is still a relatively even game, although easy is up 3 to 1. You do see that Mage Man's farming at 340 gold per minute, but he's not going to be able to do too much in this game, even if he does get farmed, until, you know, at least like the 15 20 minute mark. He needs to either get like a helm, or if he wants to go the farming route, pick up something like a. Rune Cleaver and just keep farming away there. So it'll be interesting to you know, maybe see what decision Chu decides to make. And Torture's going to get initiated at bottom here. My god, so much damage coming out from Amon Ra is ridiculous. Ashes to Ashes passive. He's easily going to get that kill. Tempest wasn't even needed there. I mean, you can see how amazing Amon Ra is early game. And this is a hero that been, I wouldn't say dropped off by any means. It's just, it's either like a pick or a non-ban. It's weird how it works. It's not really a hero you see banned all too often is what I'm trying to say. But very, very powerful and it's kind of like a, not to 
you know, get back to our old cast here, but kind of a snowball hero as well. Definitely one of those types. Is they're going to take this early tier one tower and perhaps continue to push. I mean, that's going yeah, to be, know, be their strategy. They're playing this very aggressive. And anytime you take the uh, the tower in the long lane for your team, that just means that you really want to keep on pushing and keeping the pressure on. Because if they leave this lane now, this is going to allow the group of it to push up, of course, and let Torture actually get back into this game as far as farming and getting some levels. So they're just going to want to keep on pushing. And, you know, if EZ decides to just not react, yeah, I think they'll be fine taking uh, two towers for free. Yeah, that's true. I mean, even if they do take these two towers, like you're saying, they they don't really have the capacity to go for a base tower yet, or a tier 3 tower. So this is going to allow a lot of people to farm. As, uh, Mage Bane is going to chase Polywog Priest here in the middle lane and basically drain all his mana. Now, once the mana is drained, he doesn't really do that much damage based on you know the fact how his skills work. His bottom lane oh, action. I can't keep track of anything. It's yeah, okay. I got the real camera work going here. Yeah. Oh, he died? Oh, everyone's dying left mm. and right. Yeah, well, people die in bottom, bottom lane. people die in middle, but yeah, Chu does end up finally taking down the Polywog Priest in mid, while meanwhile at bottom, uh, we did have uh, Amon Ra actually go down with uh, Nymphora also dying. So, so tell me, it, back the middle lane I wasn't watching, did, did, uh, who did they kill again? Polywog? Uh, they, did Polywog yes. like run into Glacius or something? Because I, I didn't feel like there was any way, once the mana was drained, that Chu could do anything because he didn't have his ultimate at the time. I honestly, I was clicking back and forth, so I really have no so idea. So you basically don't know what happened in either lane. That's just how I roll, you know? <laughs> I see. I want to have equal, equal knowledge. <laughs> I'm an equal, equal little knowledge. Uh, I see. Camera person. So Chu has Helm of Black Legion, as I'm sure you mentioned while I was crashed. I'm not even sure. Helm of Black Legion also on Amun Ra, so pretty even there. Uh, looking at the creep stats. Who's first here? I mean, we've got 30 and 17 on Mage Bane, so he is by far the first, the best farmer on his team. And in the game, for that matter, I mean, it's pretty, more even, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's more top heavy and on 17, easy. but on the other hand, yeah, I mean, nobody else on, uh, on oh Easy's team is really getting going at all. I mean, you do have a little bit of farm on a couple of heroes, as we have action at top, Emerald Warden taking a ton of damage. That is the second death for Emerald Warden in that oh. lane, while Rhapsody decides to come up through the river. There's an ultimate from Behemoth, not really doing anything, and Amun Ra comes in to finish the job there and take down him for us. So, oh, he's looking yeah, scary. Yeah, good job of them at least countering and getting a kill there. You know, Emerald Warden obviously struggling a little bit with farm at two minute, but I don't think they really care too much about that. They're really going to look to just win this game in the first, you know, 25, 30 minutes. This Mage Bane freaking avatar is awesome. That's all I have to say. Yeah, you know, they've done a lot of uh, good alternate avatars so far. And, you know, you do have the Heavy Metal Rhapsody. You have uh, the new Mage Bane. You have a couple other ones that I really like, too, and I can't even think of them right now. But uh, it seems like <laughs> for the Zephyr, most part they've done. Sure. Oh, as we have... Polywug actually go down to one last auto attack in middle there with uh, Glacius getting that last hit. So this has just been a back and forth game, seven to four right now in favor of EZ. But I mean the towers are just dropping left and right, and you're gonna see Han Portal just really continue to put the pressure on. I think they know that this is a game that they they really have to win or get a significant advantage in, you know, really early because they just don't want that Mage Bane to uh, continue to get free farm and Which he's not doing take right advantage now. of it. I mean, he's getting free farm right now, no problem. He's just oh, sitting yeah, in the middle lane, not even away. helping. He did get a Helm of the Black Legion, so I'm assuming that he, yeah, the main reason why you get that is just wanting to actually partake in some of these team fights earlier rather than later. Yeah, you know, instead of maybe going for something like a Rune Cleaver where you're basically just stuck farming for the first, you know, twenty minutes of the game. So glad to see him go that route because they're wow, definitely gonna need him in some of these team fights as torture goes down there. Yoda getting really caught out in just a bad position and Korok will manage to get away, popping that mana battery to get enough health to uh, survive the Polywog wards. Yeah, it's kind of a sloppy play here by both teams for the mo for the most part. But yeah, and now that he has the Hummel Black Legion like we're talking about, and he needs to get the Steam Boots, and I'm guessing he's going to go for Geos right afterwards. Uh, I mean, he's farming really well. I mean, looking at the gold per minute, he is at 350 gold per minute. While Ra is actually ahead, he's top in the game at 380. So again, this yeah, is the hero that needs to take off right now. A little bit of that's misleading though, because they do have all those towers. I mean, only two towers, I guess, right now. Yeah, that's still true. Better than no towers, and you know, so they have a little bit of that extra boost in gold. It, it's just really going to be interesting to see how this plays out, you know, in the next 
basically the next 10 minutes or so, because uh, you do have Tempest continuing to farm away. He does have around 1,000 gold now, so we'll see if he goes more for you know, a Blink Dagger, where he can be aggressive and maybe initiate in some team fights, Portal or key. if he decides to get... Yes, a portal key, or if he decides to get you know maybe some other items to just help with the general pushing. Yeah, you know, we've actually seen Tempest go with uh, Mana Ring a couple times, which again is a good pushing item, but maybe not an item we traditionally see with Tempest. Mm -hmm. As we have initiation up here, Emerald Warden getting stuck in the tree is going to try and hide there. Does have vision because he is level six with Gawain. Gawain giving him vision over the trees, but there's a Tempest ult being thrown down. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit of an overkill in some degree but you know I worth guess it when it's killing you know Chu as that hard carry with mage vein it's it's always kind of worth it making sure that they finally get a kill onto him so uh Chu ends up going down there at top uh not really the best exchange for uh easy probably not what they're hoping for yeah and looking at Amun Ra he, he opted to go for ghost marchers for better positioning for his stun but I mean just not the most typical I think Steam is by far like a standard on him just because of the fact that you gain not that it's that much but i mean the whole point of him is to be tanky and gain damage from your ignite ability later in the game but at the end of the day that's not really gonna make that much of a difference and steam or ghost marcher is gonna allow him to easily catch people in his path of destruction depending on his positioning but yeah he's definitely starting to take off now they're just letting him essentially free farm bottom looks like mage main's gonna come here and counter and that is like you said a big time counter to to Amun Ra with that mana. I mean, this is something that a lot of people don't understand or don't realize. Now, Mage Bane does so much damage early. This Polywark Priest is going to get absolutely. Oh, a nice sheep onto Behemoth Oof. might save his life here. Behemoth is still going to stun him. Not going to get the kill. They don't really have any globals to actually take him out. And some backup here from Amun Ra and Rhapsody. Are they going to be able to catch him? But he's Staccato stun on Torture. He doesn't have any mana to follow this up with. Amun Ra is not going to hit his. Path of Destruction, which I can never remember the name of, despite having those Ghost Marchers. And there's the uh, ultimate, barely by Rhapsody, only for half a second or so. His Mage Man is going to jump right in the middle of all this. Amun Ra better be careful, although he does still have his Rebirth ability, so he should be fine at the end of the day, uh, depending on if he can get CC'd or not. See Polywalk Priest Wars yeah, going down. Exactly. Mage Man being so... Okay. Amon Ra is getting really aggressive. They're relo playing him. He definitely did not have enough mana to uh, use his ultimate and come back alive. So not quite sure he's why he's being that aggressive, but didn't really cost him in the end. So uh, can't you see his balls? I did. They're they're basically dangling. They're gigantic balls just right below him. Anyway, what I was saying is the reason Mage Bane does so much damage in early to mid game even is because the mana that he burns is actually counted as damage as well so he's doing plus 64 damage which is essentially like having the damage portion of a mock of brilliance basically plus 60 damage if you have mana but once you don't have mana although his ultimate can absolutely destroy you depending on your mana pool if you don't have that big of a mana pool it's really not gonna do that much damage once your mana is drained and that's something people seem to forget they start running away from when you have no mana and you don't really like a strength hero for example it doesn't really have to worry too much unless you're amun ra who depends on his ultimate having mana so. yeah and i mean i i guess right now if you're easy you're still not feeling too bad about this game uh especially the way it got started with pushing those two towers at bottom so quickly you know it's kind of calmed down they did take down a tower at top but other than that, they, they've kind of started holding their own in these team fights, and the longer this game goes and the more that uh, Chu basically goes around free farming. I mean, he did die once, but other than that, he's had a great game so far. You know, you, you have to feel pretty comfortable about this game. Yeah, I agree. And the fact that Port's kind of, I don't know, gone into defensive to some degree. They haven't really pushed any towers since that initial pushing of the bottom two. I mean, that was like what they needed to do with all the towers, basically. Basically take out all the outer towers, go for Kongor, as Glacia is going to get cut off guard here. And I don't really see him getting out of here. And he's going to absolutely get destroyed by the Ignite. But here comes the counter-offensive from Easy. Is here's a stun from Behemoth, and Mage Bane is going to run right in the middle. He's going to decimate Poliwog. Tempest ult on top of both Yoda and B-Kid. Oh, huge Behemoth ult, though. Going to counteract his Mage Bane just tearing through people's faces here. And that mana... Burn is ridiculous. I'm telling you, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's you plus know, 64 it's ridiculous. damage. Your computer. Your face. Yeah. Why is it slow? You, you apparently always get like a million years behind me. I don't Whatever. even know how it's possible anymore. Well, I have to throw you on that replay sync mod, you know? For, uh, I don't want to do terrible. that. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> See, yeah, before you had, you had a computer that was as bad as mine. I mean, it's not even that bad. 
Like, it's fine. But now you have, like, a beast. And I do. now I'm the Reeves, you have, basically. You have, like, a little Chihuahua computer. But yeah, that's going to be up to you, basically, to try to sync up. Because uh, I'm the one doing the VOD. You know, VOD content. Basically, uh, take, gets advantage over. Yeah, we did a little pause. So, you know, I guess... Let, let's just say you're on Portal right now. Yeah. You've had some success this game, but you're still down two kills. You have basically not that much of a gold or experience lead. What, it, what, what can you really do to get back into this game, given, you know, where you're at right now? Because they're, you know, they've had some decent team fights. They've had some decent Tempest ults and still not really come out in all that mm -hmm. great of a position. As we have action in mid Tempest, does play, and they're going to try and take down poor Korok playing Glacius. He's just the one that kind of gets picked on in these team fights. This is the old going on to Rhapsody from Mage Bay to kill him. And you can really see again how much damage that Mana Burn does. Man, Ra or not, I'm sorry, not Rhapsody. Emerald Warden is going to be killed there as well. And I think the rest yeah, of Monfort is going to fall back to mid. Do you have Polywog getting a little bit aggressive here? Not quite sure what his plan is as True decides to just continue to be aggressive. Push back Polywog and he's going to keep throwing down a lot of damage but now he's getting held in place great stun there from behemoth to uh cancel that tongue tied from polywog and make sure that she was fine and dandy uh this is gonna be another great team fight for oh team my easy god dude seriously quad kill and she's now eight and one quad kill at 60 okay that ugh, that's not good for port i mean they got caught off an awful position basically what happened was amun ra went in there basically sacrificed his life which Ended up being a rebirth. He rebirthed anyway. But, I mean, he's going to be at half health at that point, so there's not a whole lot he can do to begin with. Uh, and Mage Bane just ate everybody up. They can't do much if Tempest can't get a good ult off, because the ult wasn't even... Still not even up, actually. As Mage Bane is going to continue to be aggressive here, he actually will probably get killed here, actually. Oh my god, please oh. die. Come on! Okay, oh. Yes! I got that's one right. Uh, that's good. That was a close one. Did Rob hide back? Okay, the cooldown, the cooldown on freaking deaths are so low right now, because... Still very, very early in the game. His Path of Destruction is going to be placed on a Behemoth. Not quite going to be enough, but is the Ignite going to have range? Oh my god, it's still not going to have range. Oh man. And now on the other side of the map here, we have Nymphora taking a lot of damage. Going to get stunned and killed thanks to Polywork Priest and Mr. Emerald Warden. But yeah, it's it all comes down. That fight mid where Quad Kill was placed on Chew, that's, that is pretty big. I mean, one more of those, and I'm about to call it. Just based on the fact that you have to push. Like, you're asking me what, what Portal should do. I already said, they need to take out all the Outer Towers, get Kongor, and then push Arax immediately, because they're not going to have any chance late game with Mage Bane. I mean, Emerald Warden is decent late game, but not against Mage Bane. Mage Bane will absolutely destroy you. And same goes with Amun Raz. Mage Bane is going to show his stuff here. Try to initiate yeah. on the Polywab, they're going to get sheeped and... There's, I'm making it, it's just not oh. looking too great. Oh, oh my god. Oh. So aggressive takes down Polywag Priest with the ultimate and now probably going to fall back. And it's interesting because, you know, while you do have Mage Bane, which is a pretty good counter to Amun Ra, you know, Emerald Warden is not a bad pick against Mage Bane either with her ability to uh, silence him for such a long duration. Right, so, but it's not a pick that you use to out yeah, carry know, him. That's definitely true. And again, it, it's just to the point now where Helm of the Black Legion was a great pickup for him right off the bat, deciding not to go for any farm items. It's very good against uh, against Tempest, against uh, definitely Polywog's Warren. So that was a great pickup by Chu, allowing him to be very aggressive early in these team fights. And you can see it's paid off because he's, I mean, he's 9 and 2, 18 minutes into the game with a, a hard carry. Yeah, and he's the highest farmer in the game, GPM wise, at 415. I mean, Amon Ra's still farming relatively well at 360, so. Nothing to scoff at, but again, going against this team, it's just not... I don't see it being enough in the end, but hey. This is a best of three series for those that don't don't know, by the way. Um, it is, so, you know, if you're Han Portal, I wonder at what point you're just kind of like, ah, oh, God, we don't want to have to suffer through like 30 more minutes of Mage Bane farming. Yeah, and, we've been and watching a lot of those here, lately. So, uh, I, I think you're going to see Port probably try for one more team fight and see how it goes and maybe if that's not too successful for them they'll just be looking to move on to game two because this game they had a good pushing lineup like they really did that is weren't successful in executing an aggressive strategy early well actually they were but then 
Well, okay, they the were later for, early. Like, the first six minutes, and yes. then they completely destroyed all of bottom, and then they basically did nothing from yeah, from that much. point on. So I imagine they're probably a little bit disappointed given they got off to a good start as far as the, the whole pushing strategy went, and then things just kind of fell off. Obviously, uh, Emerald Warden just struggled up there in that top lane, getting, you know, he got picked off two times, I think, in the first uh, ten minutes or so, and then in mid, Polywog Priest, as you pointed out, just could not stay in that lane and uh, I think she picked up a couple early kills onto Polywog mm -hmm. as well. Today has been quite an interesting casting day if you really think about it. First we find out as we're scheduling this to do this, these casts this best of three that apparently it's being live cast which I think they're probably done by now. I don't know how many games it's gone but it is best of three so at least two games. Uh, so we find that out at the last minute then we're about to start, and some somebody's vacuuming above, above your apartment. Yeah, it sounded... Uh, uh, I don't even know what it sounded like. It was like someone placed, like, 18 vibrators onto the floor <laughs> and just turned them on high. Oh, and that sounds awesome. Went at it for about 10 minutes, so and, it's yeah. been a fun day. And then I and, crashed uh, for the first time ever. Yeah, well, that's to be expected. Your awful computer. How dare you? How dare Speaking you? Speaking of awful, Polywog yes. now 1 in 7. I'm just kidding, uh. though. I wasn't trying to be mean, but that's just not a great matchup for him mid, especially with nobody really coming oh, that's to, the, to help him out. That's the so. risk you take when you pick somebody that has okay. to have solo experience. That's why you, you see a lot of people going with lineups that have more flexible heroes that can do dual lanes, can do tri lanes, can do single lanes, so, or solo lanes. Because now Raps is going to get initiated, my god. continue to be aggressive, yeah. and you see him trapped inside of these words. They still don't do anything because of the Helm <laughs> of the Black Legion mitigating all of that damage. He's still taking a decent amount of damage now from Amun Ra. There is an ultimate oh! from... Oh, man. That is just a great ult from Behemoth. Concede vote does go down from Han Portal. And I'm assuming if I were them, I would not want to keep playing this game. And they don't. So They're not a reason that, gaming, that is what you're trying to say. Game 1. And uh, Game 1 goes to EZ for this uh, CSN Finals matchup is Queen EZ and Han Portal. We'll be getting on to... Uh, game two shortly she ended up 10 2 and 5 in a 21 minute game yeah i mean basically all it comes down to kick. is that mid lane like we knew he was going to win it if it was a two on one versus poly but there's nothing poly can really do without help and then if you actually help and again at the end of the day you do need to help polywog but at the end of the day you're going to end up nerfing the levels on polywog as well so it's either that or just die constantly to the hard carry and i think you take the uh the former so with that, yeah, we're gonna have about, to move on uh, to throwing down some uh, hard support glacier still. Yeah, that I'm kind of shocked about that. I thought for sure he was gonna play torture, but it's all good. Korak is very flexible, and I mean we're questioning what kind of a you know roles these players would have. It looks like I mean I don't think Korak's gonna be support all the time, but interesting to see that he can play support. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen yeah. him play support. Anyways, guys, we're going to move on to uh, game two in about one minute, uh, so stay tuned. <laughs> 